Hey there, welcome back to the Path to Zion podcast, video edition. We are into the the Passover study, excuse me, invitation to the perpetual Passover. Thank you for listening. Thank you for staying tuned to this. I don't know how long this will be, and you know what? I don't care. What in the world else do we have to do? You have time now. I have people all the time. I send them, here, check out this, this podcast. I don't have time, Joel. Okay, let's just be honest. I wish someone would say, you know what, Joel? I just don't want to hear what you have to say. Just be honest. (laughs) I'd rather hear that and like know for sure other other than just wonder all the time. So uh, let's just be honest with one another. Get to a place where we can take it, you know? So we are looking at Passover. We've been looking at the pattern of the timeline of God, man. Oh, this stuff is like a bubbling, raging lava flow of volcano inside of me. I can't hardly keep it in. Praise the Lord, I don't have to. Okay, we looked at, we're unlearned, we're ignorant. We're lacking, in, we're lacking information for starters. We've become the people that Paul warned us about. And uh, we've been listening to their teachings as well. Wolves. We've been devoured. Can we just say that? The church in 2020, she's been devoured. She's been deceived. She's been removed from influence on the earth, and rightly so. She has been neutered. She's not in a good place. Okay, so let's move on. We talked about Hosiana. Man, if you didn't listen to that, you've got to go back to part two for real. Don't you dare start right here in part three now. Part two, we, we ended it with Hosiana. Okay, it was it was what people had said all the way back to pa- first Passover, and they kept it along with the ordinance of Passover, which we we've looked at and already firmly established. Keep this forever for my people; it will be a memorial forever. So, with that in mind, and you got to keep asking yourself, well, is that me? Am I Israel? I thought I'm a I thought I'm a Christian American. No, too small. We got to elevate our understanding of what I keep saying, our identity. Our identity is everything. Okay, so we looked at in uh, Mark 11 how those who went before Yeshua and those who went after him declared, Hosiana, save us. My understanding of that, I don't want, there's a revelation of God. I don't know, call it what you want. It, it was a revelation to me. Those who went before Israel. Those who followed me, you, both declared what? The same word, Hosiana. What? This is our deliverer. This is our deliverer, culminating all the time and space of the universe in one God man. Not just to fulfill it and get out of here and delete everything that preceded, but what? To empower us to do likewise. That's what he said everything. Follow me, y'all. Do what I'm doing. Follow my patterns. Follow my steps. Put your feet down where mine went preceding you. It's awesome. So those before him, metaphorical now, you get what I'm saying? Kind of parable-ish. Those who went before Those who followed, one in the same, Messiah. Isn't that the culmination of the ages, y'all? For Israel, it's beautiful now. If we don't give, man, I want to run around this room right now and I'm not even playing. If we could get this revelation as the modern day church in 2020, the church would be transformed. Listen to what I'm saying. If the church would understand that the Israel The Jews that missed the revelation of the Messiah moved towards him in faith now. And if the modern day Christian church who is totally ignorant, completely ignorant towards Israel and their identity being grafted in to Israel. If they because they have Messiah now, oh, we got Jesus. Hey, we got Jesus. We don't need that. They say we've got all this. We've got the law of Moses. You can keep your Christian Messiah, Christian Americans, and rightly so now, and rightly so now, in the sense of, I don't want just law and doctrine and empty, hollow, heartless law keeping. 
I don't want your Christian Messiah who says, you know what? I live however I want and I look just like the world. Both are right. What a revelation. But when those who are before and those who are behind come and what do they do, y'all? They gaze at the Messiah. They gaze at the slain lamb and they say, you are the son of God. You are the lamb. And what happens? Everything fits. Everything fits perfectly. Like if you're building some huge extravagant thing and you've got one last piece and you drop it in and it all gels together and becomes one unified unit. The mystery of the church, y'all. The mystery of the church. And I'm telling you right now, I'm going to be bold and then we're going to get right back into Passover. If you think that everything the Jews did was just foolishness and they missed the Messiah because of it, you better be careful. Because when you start to give yourself to Scripture like I have been doing, receiving the correction of God and my judgment towards the evil Pharisees and Sadducees, it tells us clearly that Yahweh God blinded their eyes so that I can know the Messiah. It says clearly they were blinded so that I can be grafted in. So the next time you want to be so hard, even on the leaders now that killed Messiah, why in the world did Yeshua say, God, oh, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing, right? They don't know what they're doing. And he could say the same thing to us. Modern day 2020 Christian evangelical American church, God forgive them. They don't know what in the world they're doing. They're ignorant. Their eyes are blinded. Why? Because now the revelation is coming to the Passover, the feast, the laws of God to be united rightly with the revelation of the Messiah and culminate all of creation purpose within humanity. What if that could be today? What if that could be today for you, my friend? It's for me today. I want all of it. I want to just eat it all up all day long. Every last bite of it. Those in Messiah are one in the same. Those who went before, those who came behind. It is the mystery of the gospel in its entirety. The gospel did not start in Acts. It's the eternal word of God. Creating a nation and creating a, a a nation that can receive into herself the outcast ones, you, me, the Gentile nation, the rebellious ones, the worldly ones. That's what Paul was always saying, just like Passover. Baruch haba b'shem Adonai. Uh, he's it. He's the lamb. Got it. Only those who embrace the lowly king riding in the way that he did will see him for all that he is. Ezekiel tells us, as he told Israel, you realize this is what he's saying to us. Rejoice, people of Zion. Shout in triumph, people of Jerusalem. Look, your king is coming. He's righteous. He's victorious. Yet he's humble. He's riding on a donkey, on a donkey's colt. Where was this? Ezekiel, the prophesied word that would come to pass in Jesus, Yeshua. So what if this year specifically, oh man, who boy, I need a drink for real. Why in the world does this matter right now? Oh my gosh. What's going on on the earth? We talked about this a tiny, tiny bit in part one. Signs and facts worth just touching on, and we'll get back to biblical text. But it has to be relevant to now, or it kind of loses something, right? Plagues, pestilence. Tuesday night, there's a super moon. Okay, pink moon. We know where to watch the heavens. Signs, calendars, Hebrew understanding, marked. By the phases of the moon, we've started recognizing new moon services, the Rosh Kodesh, changing my life now, marked, marked, distinct. I wanted to be in the distinct people of God for so many years. I found how by returning to what marked people and put a sign upon them like the moon. Well, that's Tuesday. 
right now, today, I'm recording this on Saturday. What's the date? The 4th, April 4th. We keep this day holy now. We set it apart. We we are Sabbath keepers. Oh, no, gosh. Did I say that? Did I say that out loud in public? We keep Sabbath, like biblical Sabbath. I was a Sabbath rest guy. I'm always in a Sabbath rest. I'm resting in God all the time. How arrogant. How arrogant I was. God convicted me, changed my life. Look, I marked this day, son. Do you understand this? Do you understand day one, day two, day three? Sabbath day. Holy, distinct, marked, consecrated, set apart. Goal. Times and seasons are marked for the people of God. If you live according to your Walmart calendar, you will not know that. Nor will I. This year is very specific, and I'm very limited in this. I've been trying to give myself to men teaching on this in great depths. I just can't. I literally can't contain it all enough to reiterate it well. But this today, this Saturday, this Shabbat day, when I, my family stops, it's called the Shabbat Hagadol. Shabbat Hagadol. It's the it's the Sabbath, the Shabbat that that precedes Passover every year. It's called the Great Sabbath. It's, it's distinct. It's different. Well, it's today. In the middle of a pestilence. Wednesday, okay, it's Passover, this coming Wednesday. The biblical calendar is lining up with the first Passover and Yeshua with his disciples on Passover. Okay, like on the on the biblical calendar now, not your Walmart calendar. We got to, oh, there's another calendar. Seriously. That's where I was most of my life. That's no big surprise. It's okay. <laughs> We're ignorant. I've been ignorant. I've known God. But there are distinct days. And even this day, this Sabbath day today is very distinct because it precedes Passover. It's marked. And the calendars are lining up this year in a way they I have not been able to find out anything definitive, but it is very rare. I've talked to men who have walked this walk, keeping feasts and all this stuff for 20 years and don't remember it ever happening. On the biblical calendars, because there's a Hillel calendar, there's a, the um, moon phases calendar. You know, we're about, well, what calendar do you live according? You know, I, that's not the point. The point is this year they line up. They're synonymous this year. And they mark biblically speaking, because you can go back and like, if you really studied, if I really studied, I could know on the timeline pretty close of even when things like the flood took place. And specifically like the Passover, when the first Passover took place, when Yeshua Jesus sat down and had the Passover meal with his disciples. And this week, today to Wednesday, exact same days of the week. I find that incredibly captivating. This is a small window of time. That's very interesting. And there's a plague on the earth, y'all. Why did the why were the Israelites told to go into their homes? A plague of judgment. From the hand of God. Now, man, even today, like, have you heard like the latest prophecy of how the devil sent this plague. I don't get it. I don't buy it. Biblically speaking, I don't get it. I can't align myself with that with that stuff. I can't. Any more than I can say, well, really, the devil did Passover. He sent it. No. God sent it in order to deliver his people and preserve them and judge the, the opponents of his people who enslaved them. So the same time when they put the blood on the on the lintel and the doorpost, closed the door, said, look, you don't come out till morning. Those who did that were, of course, delivered and spared. Likewise, we know same imagery. Those who put that upon our the door of our hearts, Yeshua's blood were delivered, were spared. He's our rescuer from judgment. 
that from God's perspective isn't do us. I'm man. I desire none to perish. We need to let that really sink in. Real quick, there's this moment called twilight when they observe Passover. Still happens today now. This hasn't stopped. <laughs> this twilight moment, right, between daylight and dark. That's when, okay, we, man, we've been, let me just say a little personal testimony. We've been doing that with Shabbat, with Saturday Sabbath, because some people watching this may not even realize that, like, the biblical understanding of day and, and night is even upside down from our culture. We're upside down. It begins at night, sunset, new day, newness of light, light, newness of life, a new day, new mercies. Well, the new mercies are coming to us when you and I go to bed. That's a whole other issue. So at this moment in between evening and night, they did the Passover meal, a distinct marked time. We're moving into what? The Shabbat Haggadol, something marked. Now that preceded, that's today. That was last night, preceding Passover, which is coming this Wednesday, four days, right? But we're going to come back to that as well. The principle of through. Oh, God, help me. This is not most of this. Oh, the principle of through. I feel like the Lord gave that, this to me this morning. I just want to present it to you as a, as a consideration. The principle of through. To help those of us who have been raised Protestant Christian of like post Jesus church pre Jesus blah, old ways to help us get our mindset shifted and changed and at least open and like postured to change the principle of through this is the way I word it may it speak to someone versus okay the principle of through versus on the other side of Yeshua of course said what he said I am the way I am the truth I am the life no one comes to the Father but what? Through me. He's the gate. He's the door. All the imagery of the sheep gate, of the gates of the, of the temple, of, of the gates of the city, even how he came in in the, in the procession. These things all matter. But he was no mere institutor of new ideas. He was the event, the God-man, the Emmanuel event, if you will, to enable man to be empowered to accomplish what has already been set in place. To continually, through him, empowered by him now, perpetually keep the ordinances of God. The perpetual Passover even. Hebrews 13 says what? Through the Messiah, through Yeshua, then... Because of this, so because of this, through him, let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of lips that give thanks to his name. Don't neglect doing good and sharing for with such sacrifices, God is pleased. Now, let me just throw this in there and we'll come right back out. What is doing good? How do we know what doing good is if we are not told what statues, ordinances are pleasing to God, what is good and right in his sight, and what we do not do? How do we know that? Well, I'm just in Jesus. Okay. Well, Jesus, of course, taught things. But do we realize he taught what had already been? Possibly not. It was not replacement teaching. So we go through him. To what? To become the children of God. We go through him. We don't go over him. We don't go around him. We have to go through him. And if we've seen him, we've seen the father. So he delivers us to the father. It's not a dividing line in the sense of what was and what now is. You come through me to what? To return to being the people of God. Because, again, I'll throw this out there and we'll move on. In Deuteronomy, it says clearly, and I taught this on the um, teaching about we need a law. It says clearly that the law of God, the Torah, is not above you. It's not too far from you. It's not beyond your ability to keep. I've been told my whole life, you can't keep Torah. You can't keep God. 
God's law. You cannot please God, Joel. You need Jesus. That says clearly in the Bible now, this law is not too much for you. It's not too much for you. The problem is we need to fess up as humanity. You know what? The problem isn't that I can't keep it, that God gave me a law that I can't keep because that's foolishness. The problem is I don't want to. The problem is I don't want law. Don't give me law. We see that all throughout the grace, excuse me, the grace church today. Don't give me law. Give me Jesus. Man, it's on T-shirts. Well, what are we really saying? We're saying, don't tell me what to do, God. Give me grace through your son. Where in the world does that fit in the biblical pattern? It does not. So who are the people of God? I'm talking about that a lot. And you may be asking yourself, well, Joel, I really don't see my identity in Israel. And that's fine. You may not. Look, I'm. this is like new understanding for me. I'm a year in at best. So who are the people of God then? Are you and I? How do we know? Are we merely, merely like just nebulously in Jesus? Most of us, yeah. Well, I know the teachings of Paul. I know Romans, man. Whew, I love Hebrews. Okay, yeah. But the, do we understand our, our eternal identity of being grafted into the original people of God and or as? That's a good question for us to ask. The Passover accounts are full of this. And we're going to get to this. There's going to be some things we're going to have to just leave out. We must first determine who is in the people of God and who is not. Israel, Gentile, division cannot be intermingled. If we are in the people of God with no separation, then are not all of his promises Commands and covenants of God with his people for me. I don't have time to give all the groundwork of the of the understanding of like if you are in the people of God. If you're truly grafted in, if you are, in fact, Israel, because, you know, people throw around verbiage like spiritual Israel. Well, that's fine if we explain what that means, but it's not so good if we just say, well, we're just spiritual Israel. OK, so let's move on to Hebrews. Right. It's not it's okay if it's a teaching of what spiritual Israel is. Okay? But if it remains this mystical, it doesn't really mean anything. You're just spiritual Israel. Don't worry about that. You're in Jesus. Well, Passover means nothing, really. Or at least it's at the least, it's greatly diminished if we forsake the the identity connection of that's me all the way through these timelines of texts. It's I see myself as the people of God. What? Through, through the Messiah, identifying with what has always been when God said, hey, Abram, guess what? Up here. I am his seed and his off, offspring supernaturally. When I was immersed, man, when my wife went into the water at Yom Teruah last year, holy cow. I felt like I, I felt I'm not joking now. I felt like I could have looked beside me under the water and seen Abraham next to me. And I'm not even playing. It was that revelational to me. I'm in Abraham. Now I'm in Jesus. Man, my, I get all that, right? Not all of it. But man, that's that wasn't something new. I had been born again, regenerated, recreated, moved from death to life. Kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of the sun, kingdom of light. I'd had that done. I had even been, excuse me, born of the spirit, speaking tongues, another language. Okay. But I had not been born of the water till last fall. And when I did, I understood the seed of Abraham. I mean, like, not just I had understood it before, but like, it became my identity. Whoo. It's like I'm transported back in time and I'm in Abraham with Yeshua in here. I think that's the merging that I described. I feel like maybe that made sense earlier. The merging of the two. It's amazing. We have to get this revelation. We have to, to move on further to the deep things of God. 
the promises, the commands, the covenants. See, here's the thing. Most most Christians talk about Father Abraham. Oh, you know, remember that from when you were eight? Yeah, me too. But what does that mean? What does it mean to be the seed of Abraham? What does that mean to be in that lineage? Our words mean nothing if we don't understand what that is saying and the purpose of what it means. American Christianity, now this is a good point. You've got to give yourself to taking this one on the chin now. I do. American Christianity, without question, wants the Old Testament covenantal promises. Boy, do they love the promises, man. The, the Psalms, Isaiah, oh, oh gosh, the prophecies. Oh, and the words of Psalms. Oh, David saying, I love your law, God. I love your law. Why do we love these things so much? Not the law, we don't. Why do we love the Old Testament accounts about promises, covenants, things God will do for us, but when it comes to anything that we've got to do for him, oh, no, I'm not about law. I'm in Jesus. I'm not in law. Well, listen, this matters in Passover because everything culminates in some things that God does, covenantally speaking, and things that man, his people, have got to do for these two to merge. It's intricately related. This is not some off topic now. Passover specifically is very dependent upon you. There are parameters. We're going to get to that as well. You better buckle up your seatbelt because, look, you're not strolling into Passover unless you do some things. You're not coming into Passover unless you say, whoa, I don't know if I'm I don't know if I'm allowed in. I don't know if I have a lanyard or a badge or a, a pass that says I can come to this feast. Seriously, now, don't skip over that part when we get there. But we want the covenantal promises of God. Oh, yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Even even ones for Israel. But when it comes to uh, well, what about the laws? What about all the statutes? What about the feast? What about Passover, which says, keep this forever for you, my people, O Israel. OK, so we want, O Israel, hear the word of the Lord, according to blessings, covenants. But then hear, O Israel, keep the Passover forever for all generations. Nah, that's not me. I'm not Jewish. We have to understand what we're saying and ask these questions. Why in the world are we so opposed to doing the full demands of us to be found what? Pleasing to the creator. Not to deem us righteous or holy. That is found in the slain lamb Messiah. Our identity is in him, which brings us through again. What? Through him, the door, the gate, the way to be the people of God. And we need to know what we're supposed to do when we're the people of God. I'm just saying. Or is there's you can't. We'll get to that later. The Christian church wants God's covenants, but not his commands. Harsh truth. The church, the modern day church, love the covenants of God. From his side now. If he, he says, I will, I will. But when it comes to I will, we will, ourselves, we check out. We love his covenant, but not his commands. Paul surely knew this as he was attempting to merge the two eras that he was right strategically placed in the middle of. Chosen by God to be the man that unified the ages via Messiah. Can we not just say he had an understanding of this? We do not have. I would say no man's probably ever had. I don't know why, other than it's just God's sovereignty and his goodness to give us an, uh, a human example other than Yeshua of a guy that like, holy cow, man, Paul got this stuff. So if we, we have to be careful. We think, oh, I understand, Paul. Man, I'm just like him. I understand what he was saying. Man, no, you don't. I don't. I don't think we do. One of the pastors at the fellowship we're going to now is doing this incredible teaching about Galatians from the proper aspect of what Paul was really saying by understanding the culture of the text. And it's like, I had no idea that's what he meant. Well, what did you think he meant? Well, what I've been told, which is like just being Jesus. No, we just operate elementary levels too often, myself included. 
But may that may that change. May we may we take this corner, especially in, in response to Passover. We're going to wrap up this part here and move to part four in just a minute. We see continuance in the New Testament. First Corinthians chapter five, seven and eight. Paul says, you're boasting. It's not good. Don't you know that a little leaven leavens the whole lump of dough? Clean out the old leaven. Why? So that you may be new, a new lump, just as you are, in fact, unleavened. For Christ, our Passover, Paul, Christ, our Passover, also has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us, who? Let us. 1 Corinthians, so, okay, Corinthians, church at Corinth. Good morning, church at Corinth. Today we have Brother Paul with us today. You've heard about him. He's a great evangelist, great teacher, amazing man of God. He's going to be teaching us about what we're supposed to be doing today because we're ignorant. Praise the Lord. Come on, Brother Paul. Paul comes up. What does he say to the Corinthian church post-ascension? Post-ascension, post-Holy Spirit coming Post new birth of the new church. Good morning, everyone. My name's Paul. Sorry for the bruises. I've had some rough days. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us, let us, congregation, let us, New Testament congregation, celebrate the feast. Whoa, what? That flies right there in modern Christianity. Evangelical America, no, 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 no. No, we don't do this anymore. Don't you know, Paul? We don't do this. There was no issue with that then, y'all. He was saying, hey, y'all, and you think anybody in that time frame said, I thought we're not supposed to keep the feast anymore. I'm in Jesus. They were Jewish people keeping every single thing Hebrew in their homes. All the feasts. Everything. Why would they not? Nobody came. Jesus didn't come and abolish everything. He fulfilled. So celebrate the feast, Corinthian congregation. Not with the old leaven, nor with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Mere metaphor? Celebrate the feast? Oh, well, they just mean the feast of the heart. They're just excited. It's, it's just a meal. It's just a meal. Why would we say that? Other than to fit our own doctrinal preference. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. That's old. I'm saying, can we at least not step back and just read the text? Christ is our Passover. All he's talking about is leaven, unleaven. And he says, celebrate the feast. It's very simple. Once our mind shifts into proper Hebraic understanding. Know what this does not say. It does not say this. Since Christ has become our Passover, let us abandon the feast. Does that need made clear? Let's do another one. Nor does it say, since Christ has become our Easter bunny, let's celebrate the feast. No. I mean, really, that sounds funny, but seriously, that's how we talk to modern church. It does not say, since Christ has become our Passover, let us abandon the feast. He says, let's celebrate the feast because Christ became the fulfillment. He is the Passover lamb. So because of that, man, now for all more reason, we're going to celebrate this feast together. He became the Passover so let's continue to celebrate it according to Exodus chapter 12. In Yeshua Messiah, our Passover lamb. Friends, we've been invited to go deeper. We've been invited to go into something that is way beyond where we've been functioning as the modern church age. I don't know much. I don't. That's probably clear. But I know something that God himself is teaching me. Why? Because I spend hours studying this stuff and giving myself to listen to men tell me something I don't agree with. Why? Because I'm probably wrong. Well, Joel, you could be wrong now. Yes and amen, I could be. But listen, would you study to show yourself approved? 
as I'm always saying to people, this is what I did with that Christmas series back on the podcast in December, obviously. All I'm saying is, do you know why you do what you do? Do you know why? Why do you do Easter bunnies? Why do you do Lent? Why do you do traditions and doctrines that originate in the Roman church who said clearly now, you can go back to the church of Nicaea and you can look at all the Nicene creeds that say clearly, we know when Passover is. We know when the feasts are. We know. We know the biblical calendar. They say clearly, we are changing them. You can read it yourself. We are changing how the church operates. We are instituting new ways, new ideas. We have a better way. And that is clearly what they did. It was not hidden. And we ourselves, here we are thousands of years later, carrying on modern traditions of men that were established by people outside of Yeshua Messiah and the feasts and the people of God. And even oppose the teachings of Paul. Why? Wolves, y'all. Wolves have come into the body and are among us. But it doesn't have to stay that way. We don't have to be vulnerable in that way. We can be learned men. I'm ignorant. I'm trying to make that crystal clear. But I'm learning. I'm in a process of learning and continually undoing everything my heart says, this is my doctrine. This is my belief. Unshakable. If it's entrusted to the Lord and he is my absolute source, it's safe to say, God, search me, know me. Try me, right? We have to do this. And we have to do this towards Passover. Why? Because today is Shabbat Hagadol. It is the great Sabbath. And in four days, Passover is coming to this earth. Will you be ready? What are you going to do? Did you have anything planned? I've already talked to people like Christian people now who know the Lord. Is that this week? Is that? Why don't we know? Let's just be mature men who say, you know what? I'm ignorant. I just don't know. This has been my whole life. I'm okay to say that. I've been dumb. I've been ignorant. I've been in darkness. But guess what? The roof's coming off. And I believe it's partly because of right now. This is the first season we've celebrated the feasts. This is our first full year in. Spring feasts right now. Passover in four days. Our first Passover. Like for real. It's God's goodness. What a gift that we would come in with all these things I already preceded this right here saying about the specifics of this Passover and how it lines up with the biblical calendar to a T. So friends, if you're a spiritual man, you better put your radar up. You better fast. You better pray. You better say, oh God, I've got to know what this dude's saying. Is this true? Are you shaking the earth with this plague and pestilence to make people sit down, shut their mouths, turn off the world, not do Easter? Not do mass? Not hunt for Easter eggs? Not even gather as corporate bodies for the most part? Why? Why right now is it? I'm just saying, can we at least say, if you don't already believe this, is it possible? It's so that we look. Behold the Lamb is all of this so that we can listen to the cry of John the Baptist to say, y'all, lay all that crap down. Behold the Lamb. That's what I've been saying for years. That's culminated over the last 14 months, y'all. I feel like John the Baptist. I'm in the water and I'm saying, I can hear him coming. I can hear the Messiah coming. And if you don't know him at all, and for whatever crazy reason you're watching this, you don't know Yeshua, man, you better message me right now. Find me on Facebook, pathtozion.com, Path to Zion Podcast. You find any way necessary, and you message me right then, right there. I'll do a phone call, whatever. 
Because listen, there's something in this hour to say, what, all this mess? Don't get distracted by all this down here. Behold the Lamb, y'all. So don't tell me this is all about law. Don't tell me this is all about Old News, Old Testament. Old. This is about beholding the Lamb. I'm going to behold Him. I will. And I'm going to tell you and anyone else who might listen for 10 seconds, look, behold the Lamb. All of this points us to what? Behold the Lamb. Behold Him. Part four coming up next. Amen.